Send me back home. I hate this zombie takeout world. What's up? Welcome to episode 416 of Zombie Takeout. Zombie Takeout. The B-Movie and Cult Movie Show. I'm John. And I am Scotto. And yeah, we're finally here. Um, we <laughs> I wanted to call this episode Come Hell or High Water. Scott had a better title. Um, last week, um, on Tuesday of last week, my power went out thanks to Hurricane Isaiah. Was it Isaiah? I, you know, I didn't have to deal with it over here. I, in I, I Chicago, saw the spelling. So. I think it's pronounced Isaiah. Anyway, yeah. power was out for 50 hours. I, I prefer putting it that way because it sounds, or just shy of 50 hours, like 15 minutes shy. I prefer saying it that way because it sounds better than just over two days. Um, that was an experience I never want to relive again. <laughs> I think uh, I think I'd been through a couple outings about that long mm-hmm. when I lived out there. At least I'd never gone more than a few hours until last week. I think I remember Hurricane Gloria. We went out for like a couple days, oh. and I think um, I think there was a Fourth of July weekend for some reason at Seaside. We just oh. were down for a couple days too. But you know, hurricanes are fairly normal. I live in Jersey. For anybody who's new, and fairly close to the shore. Um, on the other hand, last week, or this week, on Monday... I experienced something I've never experienced before. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I guess it's my rightful induction into Midwestern living, even though I've been here for, like, what, 12, 13 yeah, years somewhere. or something? 13 years, I think. Um, 15 going I, on. Yeah, probably something like close to 15. End of 15, 15 you moved. Or end of 5, you moved. 6, I think, actually. So I think. No, you're right, end of 6. Um, I experienced a tornado. Um, although in Chicago, they, they have not confirmed that it was a tornado that hit here. But let okay. me just tell you, um, I'm getting we're getting ready to just like hang out in a room without windows because we're hearing the sirens. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm just gonna like adjust the bed. It's one of those electronic things. Right. And as I'm adjusting it, I stop because I hear this really weird noise. It's like, it's like. A train, almost, as they say. (laughs) It really is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, everything just starts uh, blowing up against the window, and you hear smashing and just breaking, and Mm -hmm. the power goes out. And, uh, yeah. So, when we took a walk around outside afterwards, the rest of the block is fine, except for a stretch of ten houses, where there are just... Trees down mm-hmm. everywhere. I saw the photos. <laughs> and uh, so, to confirm that it was a tornado, because mm. a lot of people are saying it wasn't confirmed, whatever, mm. our neighbor has one of those basketball nets in his backyard. It was in the opposite direction from where the wind was coming, wow. upside down on its fence. <laughs> Wow. So it somehow got blown backwards from the direction the storm came in, Oy. which the only thing that would do that mm-hmm. <laughs> would be a tornado. Yeah, yeah. And I know they're a thing in the Midwest, but you're in Chicago. You, I would think all of the big buildings would break the wind enough so they wouldn't happen. We are in the city proper. There's a few neighborhoods over where they did confirm a tornado landed, uh, you know, touched down. So wow. it really wouldn't be that crazy if hmm. this was one too i, I can't see what else it would be oh, yeah, it makes it sense just, i mean well I mean, yeah it's it makes just sense. the rush of a storm yeah, everything given the damage the it makes direction. sense i just yeah. i wouldn't think a tornado could hit in a city yeah uh, they've they've said that's been the biggest fear is like a real like f5 would someday come and hit because this is you know we, we do get the weather here. <laughs> we but, get the oh, I, know, I know, it's notorious for snow, but, you know, yeah. tornadoes hit where it's big and open and the wind has space to really build up. <laughs> Doesn't really my happen in the city. A, my boss, who's like a neighborhood or two over, uh-huh. said he saw like a dust devil kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> huh. Also, while he was trying to get his stuff secured. You know, this occurred to me, I've seen the pictures and thinking back into the Kenny Dennis review. Your neighborhood's a lot more suburban looking than I would have expected. 
oh, that's Chicago. It's very flat here. It's very, uh, you know. Hmm. But like once you, separate once buildings you get, and everything. Once you get past the, uh, you know, the downtown area, hmm. it, it's all just. Like they they did the Sears Roebuck houses like okay. literally they ordered them out of the Sears catalog, uh-huh. and there's so many two flats here. Okay, but there's also you know condos and stuff. It's a it's a pretty big mix. Oh, moving on. Um, I do yes. have a slight correction from last week. Um, I credited the actor who played Garrick on DS9 as uh, Mark Robinson. He's actually Andrew Robinson. I kind of can uh, combined his name with Marco Limo, who played Ducat. I I, make, I confused my Cardassians. I think um, we were pretty damn exhausted last episode. Yeah. Um, I also want to plug uh, Memory Alpha. It's a Star Trek wiki. As I've been getting more and more into track, it's been invaluable to kind of look up lore and and that you know different aliens and such. Um, when I was getting into Discovery, the timeline is like, you really need to follow it because yeah. it's like, okay, so when did this happen and when did that happen? Because there's yeah. just so much now in the prequel world, right. at least. Um, I, I'm I'm up to season four. It just keeps getting better. I think it's my favorite track yeah. series now. Finally, moving on to this week, um, we have some listeners submitted. This is from Bodo on Twitter. He said, okay, Pat have inverted. Was I, was I the only one waiting for people from the Z-axis to save the day uh, because they had a better angle on everything? 69? Enough said. Talcacoon? Hmm, okay, sure, and at least free. Minor thing about Pata Inverted. Kind of expected and a kiss then to f- find out um, uh, through the diary that they were brother and sister. Um, Ooh. The, whole, the whole look in life. I know. Um, <laughs> they didn't actually kiss, which we'll get to. I was very happy about that. Um, but, yeah, the whole Z-axis thing amused me, I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> Make it 3D. Um, and that all brings us to this week's movies. Yes, I said movies. Um, we have a Yasuhiro Yoshiura double feature. He's the same director. He directed both of these. He also directed Time of Eve, which we reviewed back in 2015. Uh, this week we have, from 2006, Pal Cocoon. It's a, a short film. And the feature from 2013, Padma Inverted. Of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary. Sponsored by Kenny Loggins, flying into the danger zone since 1986. And also brought to you by the Excavation Department. Work on your own schedule, or or not at all. Mm-hmm. All right, so we have obviously the uh, world of the future. Uh, underground, industrial, um, just who knows where these guys are. Uh, I keep thinking of Star Blazers, of course, because they lived in an underground lair. It's been uh, way too long for me to remember that. Yeah, yeah, they were going to save the Earth while everybody was living underground. But um, but here we have uh, we don't really see many people of this uh, of this world because we're following. Well, I guess I want to say kids. I don't know how old they really are. I would say twenty somethings. 20 somethings maybe uh they're kids to me mm. uh, <laughs> they are uh, working for the excavation department they're uh, uncovering things or downloading things from a database that i'm not sure where they're getting it from but it's a- and as they they progress you figure out that it's from us Uh, Mm -hmm. either 20th century or 21st century life and then the more they progress you realize we fucked everything up and that's why they're there they say um the archives we knew as history ended at some point right so uh the the and hence the sponsor the the members of this excavation department they just get so depressed by this uh that they they drop out or sometimes you know don't show up regularly or sometimes they just decide they're not going to do this at all because they just don't want to know and it's really brings up the debate of you know is knowledge important or is it better to you know be blissfully ignorant right, right. and uh they give you of course a resounding of course it's better to know because right. <laughs> the it turns out the, this is instructions left from the people that got them here and uh, what to do when everything gets better again because there is still hope Mm -hmm. Uh, and he finds out where they are really and hilarity ensues 
And I love the very beginning. It's this epic shot of this enormous uh, staircase. Now, my notes kind of suffered this week or last week or wherever <laughs> the fuck we did this. <laughs> <laughs> you last week, me today. My my notes suffered because I watched this not on a computer, but on a real, you know, television, oh, okay. you know, widescreen. And boy, was I rewarded for that, for this. Because, <laughs> I mean, the animation is just beautiful. Yeah. It, how much is digital? I'm sure you know. I didn't, fair, I didn't really find that in my research, <laughs> but I can tell looking a fair amount of it is 3D. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it was probably all done on a computer. Um, nobody, very few, I will say, hand draw anymore. Miyazaki, okay. pretty much it. And maybe some people at Disney. Those are the ones who hand draw anymore. Um, but there was a lot of CG in this. Uh, a lot of those 3D panning shots around the staircase were all digit- were all 3D. Um, and it fits because it's just this industrial world, mm-hmm. you know, where they're just pretty much living in the trash compactor kind of thing. Yeah. Um, at one point, um, Riku, the, the or, no, sorry, Ura, the, the male lead, describes it as an artificial concentration camp. Yeah. <laughs> But he just what starts the catalyst for the, his discovery is this um, image he finds with sound. Um, up until this point, he'd only been finding photos and text documents. He finds a video, but it is seriously corrupted. Yeah. And when you see it at first, it's this jarring noise and this person who looks very distressed in the image. And it's just very jarring. It's as jarring to the viewer as it is to to Yura. I mean, it, it takes you back to. I mean, if you if you were uh, online back in the early days, it is exactly what it was like. So mm-hmm. yeah. And I I loved the shot of them. They they they're on these sort of people movers, which both movies had in common. People movers. Yeah. Um, and they go through this electronic sign. You know, there's this you know sign saying I don't forget what it was saying, but they they actually physically moved through it. It was all just a projection. It was very Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, and at one point they say they're closing off the excavation department. Sound very ominous. <laughs> yeah, basically saying we don't want to know anymore. <laughs> right. There's uh, that 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 was it. They just it was just too sad for them mm-hmm. to understand the truth. Yeah. But the truth is really kind of a roadmap to get them the fuck out of there. Right, right. Um, I, I like how they worked the exposition mostly into the dialogue with just a short bit of explanation. Yeah. And even the explanation was interesting because it was just a quick voiceover about you know, how they used to live closer to the surface, but it got things got worse and worse and they had to move further down to the, the um, life support equipment. Right. And that, of course, you, you think, okay, so they're still, you know, they're they're on the planet still, you know, they're on Earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I love how they mix these map overlays with I have real quote unquote real shots of pictures of the characters. Yeah. What would be photographs if it you know, f- you know filmed shots if it wasn't animation? Um, it's just you never quite know if you're seeing a map or you know reality or the reality of the film anyway. Yeah, um, and the past is so obscured that they don't even know what a book or a library is. Right, and I, you can see us heading in that direction anyway. I well, mean, you got to figure, given what happens at the end, um, they've have to have been up there for a few hundred years at least. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, in fact, I think there was somewhere that said uh, the time, or am I thinking okay. again, I'm mixing up the two movies? No, I'm mixing up the two You're movies. You're mixing up the two, because I do have a guess yeah. on Padma Inverted. Um, yeah. But no, there's no indication of how long it is, but do we want to just give it away? Because we decided we weren't going to, we were going to spoil this one. Yeah, this one's okay to spoil, because, yeah. well, it's only like 20 minutes, yeah. and two, you kind of figure it out. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> for... Pale Cocoon. They're on the moon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because Earth was, as they put it, rusted. Overpopulation had just destroyed the Earth. Um, and by the end of the movie, we find out they're on the moon, or they find out they're on the moon. And Earth has been restored. It has regrown. That had po- to have at least taken a few hundred, if not thousands of years. Right. 
the pods at the uh, bottom of the pool were alien eggs that were ready to hatch. Right. Um, <laughs> that one took me a minute. Um, <laughs> Rest in peace, Wilfred Brimley. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they were up there for a very several generations. So, you know, yeah. assuming they went up, you know, even just a little after our time, we're mostly digital. Right. And Books are kind long. of, you know, an artifact for us. I, yeah, I, we're still going through our, our collection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did a purge some years ago. I'm um, building, I'm building shelves actually right now. <laughs> so I can easily see them, you know, this, this generation, let's say a thousand years in the future, you know, on a, on a moon where they never had physical books. Right. No Having no clue what there. they are. Although, I guess you could 3D print paper. Yeah, which, I suppose. Um, I mean, think about that statement. You can print the paper. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be that some is, way. There's got to be, be how it goes, isn't it? I mean, yeah, there's got to be some artificial paper. There's got to be, you know, some that doesn't require trees. I'm sure someone's, yeah. I'm sure someone's working on something. Um, I loved the shot of uh, Rico, the female lead, laying on the stairs. Oh she, yeah. Um, the the other main character, um, Rico, she spends most of the movie laying down on this giant flight of stairs. She explains why later, and it is just chilling. Yeah. Uh, she explains that her her grandmother, who had lived much closer to the surface, fell from the stairs. Um, and ended up living down there. And again, just the animation, the the those little things floating down. Yeah, the little air particle, the air, the little particles in the air, which we get in both movies. Um, yeah, and floating in different directions. Um, but and I'm gonna shock you again. This is gonna be another "What have you done with John?" moment. But I liked the montage. There's a montage of Udo and and of Udo going through the archive and trying to restore this video. And and Rico just laying on the stairs in different positions with music playing over. I liked it. It, it established I, that you know, time had passed. Work had to be done, which is the whole point of a montage. But this one worked. Well, now I'm convinced the tornado has taken me to a different <laughs> universe. Uh -huh. It's weird. Everything's in color now too. Huh. Um, I, I loved Rico's line. Uh, I don't want to lose any more hope in reality. She when she was trying to basically tell uh, Udo to stop working on the archive. Which is a crazy statement because you're you're facing away from reality. Right. <laughs> I don't want to know more, so right. I don't want to lose my faith in something that I don't want to know about. You've, it means you've already lost faith in it, of course. Right, of course. And then the video, the video clip he found turns out to be a music video. Yeah. That's like the only downside to this, probably. <laughs> but it kind of works because we get the music video as he's starting to kind of investigate. It's kind of juxtaposed with him investigating and kind of starting to, you know, go toward the surface to right. see what's really there. And we see Rico walking in while it's playing. He walks out on the video to go exploring. She walks yeah. in and they kind of see it both at the same time. As he's making his way, he has to force his way up this elevator shaft, on t riding on top of an elevator. It'd be uh, much easier to do that in the next movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, loved the shot of the shuttle engines. Oh yeah, yeah. As he gets to the top, he you have these windows, and you see these space shuttle engines in these in the clouds. Just, very psychedelic, very yeah. moody blues, uh, question of balance. <laughs> and we see that the video, as they both realize where they are, the video is saying, talking about how comfortable and idyllic it uh, is on this colony near the Sea of Tranquility. And, you know, we get that juxtaposed with, you know, these shots of, as he put it, the artificial concentration camp, this, this very, um, very Brazil-like world. Oh, yeah. Um. And then at the end, we finally see the, the big kicker. The, the, the video shows Earth rusted, and then Uter looks up and sees Earth is back.
I mean, it ticked me off a little bit because you've got those people out there that are like, we don't need to worry about the environment. We'll just go and uh, hang on Mars for, you know, a bit. It's like, that ain't going to fucking happen, man. (laughs) (laughs) Don't encourage them. (laughs) Well, I mean, theoretically, it would would grow back. It, It, you could... It could restore itself. It would just take a long fucking time. Oh, of course. Right. It is possible that the world will grow back without humans interfering yeah. in it. However, humans living on another planet, uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not the best option. <laughs> do we want to do brains individually or both? Yeah. Individually? Let's, yeah, we might as well do our brains right now. I'm giving this one a four. I really like it. I've seen it before. Um, it's very different when you know the answer, the ending. I'm right there with you with the four on this one. Um, it, the, it's just visually beautiful. A bit slow, but it, uh, I mean, it, it does get you thinking, at least. Mm, yeah. It's kind of a crazy thing to watch, of course, during this time. It's kind of in that category with the lighthouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what movies... Should you not watch if you're not uh, around people anymore? <laughs> I thought we were going to split on this one I, uh, from uh, some of the stuff you were saying earlier. Oh, I just saying it wasn't a good Wilford Brimley tribute. Yeah. Um, all right, now on to Padma Inverted. This is uh, again Maybe from it's 2013. A good Steve Gutenberg tribute. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he was in that. I only remember him from uh, the Police Academy movies. Rest in peace, Steve Gutenberg's career. Actually, okay. he was just on. Um, he was just on uh, last week tonight. They uh, hired oh, him well. to do the cameos nice. <laughs> to, for their issues or whatever. I don't know. It was impromptu weird. plot summary for Padma. Ah, uh, yes, a second impromptu plot summary with only uh, the one set of sponsors. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We we uh, alas could not get the cash from an extra set of sponsors for some reason. Uh, and and in reality, I had to borrow one of Scott's sponsors because I hadn't come up with one. Yeah, I've got to I've got to hit the sales department as to see why they're not getting mm-hmm. they're not selling all our ad space. This, this is bullshit. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um so we have this uh what well, we we begin with and this one's a lot more actually impromptu cuz since I had a dry run at the first one. Yeah. <laughs> After our system crashed. Everything before um, I announced the titles of the movies was recorded separately, but we were having connection issues. Yeah. But anyway, we begin with a shot uh, pretty much of, well, I guess it looks like pretty close to right now. <laughs> but the uh, we then see, we hear like some voices uh, over a radio, but then all of a sudden... Video goes every, a little glitchy. Everything starts going glitchy, and it looks like things are just being shot up into the air Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then he kind of goes it goes out uh we next next thing we know we are in an underground uh this one much more like the star blazers uh Mm -hmm. earth (laughs) where they uh were living underground um and uh they there's a uh, danger zone that that this girl is forbidden to go to and um it's guarded by what they call the Batmen. And, um, well, of course, since she's a young girl, she wants to see what's out there. Hmm. So she goes exploring and uh, she meets one of the Batmen, who are just dudes that are effortlessly standing up on the ceiling. And, uh, well, she doesn't and she, meet him in that way. She sees him and runs away or tries to get right. away. Yeah, she well, she encounters him and tries to get away, escape, mm-hmm. and um, well, I mean, she's on the floor, he's on the ceiling, right. so they never really meet. Right. But um, and she overcomes this obstacle later, but we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it uh, it really goes sideways. <laughs> from she, here. Fall, she falls off the edge <laughs> of a cat, catwalk, and she falls up. Well, she, for her, from her perspective, falls down. That's right. That's right. She falls down, and then she gets caught on the fence mm-hmm. at the top of the fence, but hanging upside down from the fence. Yeah. Emerges which... from a drain, and then in, she's in a tree, and then it gets weird. She starts falling up. <laughs> yes. She starts falling up. 
I had to rewind to be like, wait, what the fuck? I thought she fell. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I gave you no warning for these movies. So she uh, she's upside down and uh, she meets a young man who um, helps keep her tethered to the earth. Uh, brings her into a building so she can at least stay on the ceiling. He keeps her grounded jump. both literally and physically. Yes, very much and so. Physically. Anyway. Um, so <laughs> the the mystery is there's this whole society that lives in this uh, other world oriented in a different direction uh, with a different center of gravity. And uh, her society is only well i guess it was just kind of a legend there were whispers of it mm-hmm. yeah they they completely forgot these people were there uh there's a bit of a dick uh, a, a bit of a dick <laughs> <laughs> a, a real dick a totalitarian despot kind of um probably you know I mean, literally steepling of the fingers and mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. a combination between Mr. Smithers and uh, the guy from the Iron Chef. Who is out to stadium. exterminate the inverted, the people who live underground. Basically, for the people underground, gravity goes one way. For the people on top side, the gravity goes the other way. Oh, and you know, I said the bass in a Diana Ross song. This is very much influenced i think by a peter gabriel song called downside up okay that would work <laughs> even better where where they are um where, where it is about like the sky people and the earth people okay and yeah the, so he was very much influenced by this and when he performed it live they had gravity boots oh, him wow. and his daughter and they were upside down singing nice <laughs> from like this big scaffolding up uh, over the stage but anyway, um, so the uh, they had both of them the him the the Padma the girl Padma, from the underground and Aji the boy from Topside. They they both have their long lost uh, idols, who uh, they they are both pining for. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aji, his father, who uh, died in uh, sort of an accident. experiment, and. Uh, Padma, her was it her older brother? I think just an older guy she was friends with. It was weird. I was waiting for it to be her father. They never went there. No, you knew it wasn't her father. Uh, but but you know, it was just kind of a hero of hers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it turns out the two of them worked together. Uh, and it also turns out that um, that uh, this the dictator mm-hmm. has killed both of them. And I say balloon, it wasn't really a balloon, but it was a flying machine. Yeah. Or an upside down machine. Or a falling machine, depending falling on machine, you know. depending on your point of view. Yeah. Um, so, and this guy was, this dictator was a real idiot because he, um, well, as my notes say, what dumbass implicating yourself in his father's murder while trying <laughs> to get him to conform? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, of course, that, that led to him uh, rebelling even more when he figured out that, wait a minute, it wasn't an accident that killed my father? <laughs> it was he, this asshole? I'm going to be you for a second. He really put the K in dictator. Mm-hmm. He really put the K in dictator. I think Wilfred Brimley would be proud of that joke. <laughs> um, anyway, they <laughs> he captures Padavan and... Um, Ag breaks her out. Oh, and uh, all right, so they uh, they wind up going well. But wait, 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 we didn't get to Padma being kidnapped. Did we? Okay, I was just jumping ahead, maybe a little bit to speed things up. Yes, Padma gets kidnapped. Uh, Ag winds up going down underground mm-hmm. to right. um, to uh, get oh, right. He gets uh, some help. Yeah, from a friend uh, of hers, Porta, who has a thing for her. Yeah. And um, they also figure out that this tower that the dictator lives in is pretty much connected to the uh, the underground world because... The shaft she fell down is the basement of the tower. Right. At one point, the two societies were actually in communication with one another. 
and um, which is kind of important for the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they they both come back and do a, a daring zero gravity rescue. Right. Uh, some of the most intense chase seeds you're ever going to see, which normally I find a chase seed boring. Mm -hmm. These are when you take gravity mm -hmm. and twist it like this, literally twist it, it uh, becomes a lot more intense. They could have made a great physics game out of this movie. Yeah, I was kind of wondering about the physics. I mean, I imagine that's it's, it's accurate, but... Um, well, the actual physics of, of the, the gravity thing, I don't think is, but... <laughs> well, the question is, what if there are two centers of gravity? Right. <laughs> That's yeah, the big question. What happens if there's a center of gravity for something else and right. for, for a different object? I, I, I uh, normally would nitpick, nick, normally nitpick physics, you know, science in movies, but I would need a degree to nitpick this one on any kind of decent level. Right. I, I, like, I feel like we should... Contact Neil deGrasse Tyson and ask him <laughs> what he thinks of this. Yeah. Like, is it possible for two different uh, gravitational poles for different objects? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it could be. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. So that kind of the rescue happens. The rescue happens, and um, he. Um, well, of course they. Um, I think they just leave, right? That's right. They just fucking leave. They, they run wild. away off the top of the building <laughs> and and fall upward. Yes, they they keep falling upward, grabbing onto not... each other. She weighs, I guess, her gravity is slightly. Yeah, because she, she's got a weight on her foot that they were using to keep her there. Her gra her she weighs a bit more than he does at that point, so they go upward. Right. He just says fuck it and goes upward. They they come into a scaffolding though, mm -hmm. and you see like different. Yeah, I thought they were going to explain this a little more, but you see in different places where things are kind of uh, coordinates, like mm -hmm. there's a, a letter and a number in different yeah, places. Yeah, section E3 or something like that. Right, and, and there's like I mean, different places they're in. When they go up to the scaffolding, this is when I kind of figured things out. When I saw like the letter and number up there, it's like, wait a minute. Hmm. <laughs> This is all one big fuck up, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, they come back uh, for vengeance, and uh, I guess I could say hilarity ensues from and there. And lots of mind fucking happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing. Like, as soon as she falls up, you know, you're If like, you have any equilibrium issues, this is maybe not the movie for you. Yeah. Normally, chase scenes bore the fuck out of me because you know exactly how the chase scene is mm -hmm. going to end most of the movies. But this, when you have the gravity in the equation, it's just like, ah, my palms are getting sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of heights, and there were some perspective shots that were, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> but I like how they very briefly show what happened right at the beginning they get that experiment out of the way well right and they don't explain what it is so it's just like every, something got fucked up <laughs> but they don't leave that as the big mystery um also we were talking about the animation last time i love how detailed the backgrounds are particularly in the underground right i think it works better on um, the indoor stuff mm -hmm. i mean yeah it, it's it's not quite as breathtaking as the uh, the first one, mm -hmm. but I think I think that's tougher to, to do in a full feature yeah. movie. And artificial stuff's always easier to draw than organic stuff. Yeah, it it really fitted for that movie though the CG, yeah, uh, um, because it was just this industrial machine that they mm -hmm. were all a part of, whereas this was right. organic. And I love how the art style changes when she's alone and you see these dark, gritty exterior, you know, background shots of these underground tunnels. And then she's with her family and with the other people underground. And it's all bright and very simplistic and all kind of, you know, very classic cartoony. Yeah. It's a great mood shift. Um, and it took me a while. They flash back to the last time she talked to Lagos, her, her idol. Um, and it took me a minute to realize it was a flashback because the transition was just so smooth. 
Yeah, they did some. I'm trying to remember the device they used. To they showed her laying in a bed, a and you just her her costuming changes, her wardrobe changes. She gets younger. Also. I didn't even notice she got younger. She was just wearing yeah. something different. I thought it was just a quick time of day change, but it was actually a flashback. Um, and then we you see that the top side world is actually tracking the people from the underground, uh, referring to them as Sakasama beings. Right, and, and you know they they had this weird relationship uh, where they just forgotten about each other mm-hmm. somehow. Although the the I can't and I can't remember the dictator's name. <laughs> I don't Ishimura, it, I think. Yeah, I think it was Ishimura. Uh, how he wasn't quite sure that they existed until. Right. Until Padma came along, until Yet one he of the Batman saw talked... Padma, right? Until then, he wasn't quite sure if Lagos was real mm-hmm. or not, you know. And I love the design of the Batman. Yeah, it's like like old school, like Vertigo comics, kind of the stuff um, League of Extra- League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was messing with. Uh, that a little bit of like. Um, Night Owl from Watchmen. It's that kind of design. It's big goggles. I was kind of thinking of uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall, you know. Where... Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned Floyd there. Um, a lot of the shots of the kids on the people movers and how, you know, rigidly lined up they are reminded me oh, of Oh, yeah. Floyd. Yeah. I mean, when he just. Yeah, one of the best moments in this is when he is leaving Padma mm-hmm. to go back to school and he steps on that people mover and just that dead stare in his eyes yeah. that, that changes over that that was just oof. Mm. you knew exactly what you were in for what kind of world it was they lived in at that moment yeah. it summed it all up but i just love the mind fuck of her she falls down a pa- down a mine sh- down a shaft and then falls up across a fence <laughs> <You're> right <laughs> I swear I had to rewind. Like, wait a minute, what what just happens? And it gets a little confusing. What will obey which gravity? Um, it's I think the people are what or anything that was there when it when it happened will obey the different kinds of gravity. Because she has a photo right. of the top of topside that obeys topside gravity. Yeah, it's. Their their keepsake she has that uh, that of course go up the ceiling, right. and the dust observes top side gravity. We referenced that before. Um, I love the rotating shot when she first pulls Ag off the ground because when they fir- she first encounters him, she's holding onto a fence. It takes her hands to kind of you know pull her down or, or keep her tethered, and she's got a backpack on. And the backpack is just enough extra weight to lift him up. And there's this rotating it, shot that is just well, stomach turning if you have issues with heights. And at first you're you're kind of like, what the fuck? Why is he reacting so much weird like this to flying rather than just like, what the fuck? It's more of a, my God, I'm flying sort of thing mm-hmm. where, where he's just, he just can't believe it. Right. Uh but it's they explain later about his father's obsession with mm-hmm. flight, and so this was a great honor for him yeah. to well, follow into his father's footsteps. Well, there's that, and there's also the inverted were not only thought of as a myth, but they were demonized. Yeah, both sides were taught to hate the other, and they explain that very subtly at first. With just a couple of lines to each other, he he takes her to this shed where she hides out for a while. And there are some lines to each other that kind of establish that they don't trust each other's people. Well, the, the bottom people, the people underground, they, I don't know if there's mu- as much of a hate for them. Well, no, they don't uh, seem... From them. They're more afraid of the top Well, siders. yeah, it's more of just stay away from those people. Right. Um, the topsiders are taught to hate the inverted. Um, and then, um, as they're 
in the shed, I think it was, it was as he was going back to class, you get this hit of romantic music. And <laughs> I loved the moment when, you know, they're, they're kind of parting and, and she says something and the music just stops dead. Yeah. And, and it picks up again and she says something else and it stops dead. <laughs> she was interrupting the, the score. I loved that part. Well, right. I think she wanted like some food. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because he was going off to off to back to his class, and she was like, "Oh, you know, please don't leave me, please don't leave me." And I love how this movie kind of plays with the romantic subplot, but never actually goes there. I mean, you went there enough. You knew the two of them were pretty much destined to be together. It of never stop. It never makes it explicit. You could read it either way. We'll get to that when the, in the later scene, but it's never explicit. Um, which I love. You could read it romantically, and that's valid. You could also, like me, choose to not read it romantically, and that's still valid. Um, they walked that line. I mean, they were on top of each other enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they didn't kiss. They didn't exchange I love yous. So, you know. Um, but back to the, the earlier in the film. Loved the music that kicked in when he goes back to school, and you see how rigid that that life is yeah they are they live strictly by rules um again we're uh, pink floyd uh <laughs> very pink floyd and the indoctrination video they were shown was just fucking terrifying <laughs> yes you have the dictator telling them um basically how evil the inverted are and this was the second time i've seen the film which and it's a very different experience the second time you see it yeah, because you, you can know where it's going. Yeah. And second time around, I can see the need for them being so strict. But it still seems wrong. Well, right. Because Especially he's, considering. <laughs> he's actually turning it into kind of a religious thing. He says it's a sin to fall into the sky. Oh, yeah. It, it's a sin to explore. It's a sin to question anything. You know, it's a sin... I, I, tying into the first one mm-hmm. it's a sin to learn right a, a, about who you really are right and normally when you have a film and this happens a lot in anime where you have you know teenagers as the leads it can be a little twee it yeah. works in this case because they need to be kids because they haven't been indoctrinated and they don't know what happened yet right and there's the sense of i could find out what's going on right you know it, it it works in this case. Um, they also show a brief shot of some prisoner from the underground, um, who I briefly, who I, it took me a minute to figure out was Lagos. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure, but I was kind of like, is that, you know, because mm-hmm. they never show his face. Right. Until the end, until they show him to Panama. Um, yeah. And it took me a minute to kind of figure out how long ago the, the accident happened. Um, I think I, I think I worked it out um, because yeah. they show the birth years of both AG and Padma. It's um, MG forty one. I'm guessing MG, MG is you know when the accident happened. Oh, I'm I'm kind of assuming that's when their calendar would start, um, and assuming they're both about sixteen, it would be just shy of sixty years since it happened. Okay. Um, which would mean that some were old, you know, the old guy in Panama's uh, bunker was alive for it. Oh. See, I thought he was kind of like the second, you know, I mean, he, yeah, he's kind of like the second one to take over, I think. Yeah, he was the so chief of past like, recently. Yeah, so, but you're right. Maybe he was young enough when it did happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he to, was around for remembered. it. I don't mm-hmm. think anybody else we saw in the film would have been around for it. Yeah. Me, but AG's father, maybe, but he, he isn't alive in, in the film. I also loved the shot of AG walking past his classmates when they were on the people mover. Just after we saw what was being done to Padma after she was, you know, kidnapped. Yeah. It just kind of, it was such a great metaphor. He was off of, he, you know, the, the off veil the had been lifted. <laughs> yeah. You know, he was off of the off of the track. Um, 
also loved the underground how the underground was flipped uh, when AG went down. We saw it from his perspective. <laughs> this movie does brilliant things with perspective. Oh yeah, yeah. I've never seen a movie do what they've done with perspective here. Mm-hmm. And again, we get a great video game. I think this is where the video game is. What AG and Porta yeah. breaking into the tower to rescue uh, Batman. <laughs> That's so the there video, was a video game. game? Because it's a total physics game. True. You know, whose weight are you using? <laughs> and the bed that the Padma right balance is in. of weight. Yeah, yeah. The They find Padma. She's in a bed on the ceiling and this domed glass ceiling in, in, in the tower. And they show her kind of getting, you know, kind of sitting on the edge of the bed from her perspective, looking down into the sky. Absolutely sure, terrifying. Uh, it was about, you know, reliance upon him. Yeah. Um, loved the twist um, with this when they get up to um, when they find the flying machine. You know that just messes with your head. <laughs> and and again, I turned into you in my notes. Uh, his dad's flying machine, falling machine is more like it. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes it takes. It really flying is just uh, You're f- missing the ground. Missing the ground, yeah. Yeah. Um, Douglas Adams, miss him. Uh, Marion calls a song with a similar line. Um, yeah. And once again, I liked a montage. They show a montage of Ag's father and Lagos building the flying machine. And it's not just a montage of you know getting things done to quote the song. Um, <laughs> it's jo- it's backstory. You gotta have a mentish. That was useful to fill things in. It was them getting stuff done. They were they were building the machine. Yeah, but it wasn't like in the course of the movie montage. It was a, a backstory montage, which was interesting. Um, and okay, so they're up in the ceiling after the found they found the flying machine, and she's right above him because their gravities are still opposite. Yeah, talking about how they're going to get back down and you know reveal everything and and you know tell everybody what's going on. They're holding hands, their head, foreheads are touching. It's a close, affectionate moment, but it, I don't necessarily see it as romantic. And Bodo mentioned a kiss. I watched it three times. They pull out before there's a kiss. I thought there was a kiss too. There was there, no actually. kiss. I watched that scene specifically <laughs> to make sure. Their foreheads were touching, they were holding hands. It was very affectionate, but it was nothing necessarily romantic. And I love that, because you could read it as romantic if you chose to. But you could also read it as platonic. Love how they walked that line. Because um, I was prepared to dock it a half a brain if there was a romantic subplot. <laughs> ah, with the proximity and stuff you could understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, okay, when they're, you know, they finally get the ship, down, or the flying machine down, and they just, they realize they need to jump from the machine to survive. You know, because, yeah. you know, Ishimura shows up with his men and they've got the net gun, basically a bazooka that fires a net that they use to, to um, capture inverted. Um, so they do the... It's pretty much taken straight from Total Recall. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Um, so they fire the net at them. They, it hits them. They end up over the danger zone. I love how the net just falls off. <laughs> like, try again. And then we get to the ending, which we're not going to spoil. No. But wow, the gravity got interesting. <laughs> yeah. Damn. <laughs> it it flips a few times. Uh, it, it's hard to keep track of which way is up uh, or oh. which way should be up for who, for, you know, which character. Um, right. It's, yeah. It was um, a lot of hanging, a lot of a uh, Buster uh, Crab kind of. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> Love the trees growing out of the ruined buildings, though. Yeah. Um, and there's like a waterfall coming out of a building in one shot. Loved that. Um, again, connects with Pal Cocoon in a lot of ways, which is why I put these two together. Same director and and um, similar themes. Um, you know, Earth had been reclaiming itself. Um, and loved the waterfall coming out of the building. Um, on to sequels and remakes, because I've got ideas for both. <laughs> I loved. I would love to see a full a full feature that starts with Pal Cocoon and then shows the aftermath. 
Oh. You know, of, of you know, they, they find out they're on the moon and now they're telling everybody and what, you know, obviously there's going to be a backlash and the government's going to want to shut it down. And how the uh, fuck does Uro get off of that elevator cart? <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think he, they, they just were happy to go back home, though. I mm-hmm. don't know. I mean, I don't know if there's a backlash or not. If they just, yeah, I don't. Although... I, I think there might be an invest. You know, pe- the powers that be might have an investment in keeping them in the moon. I mean, if you're if you're if you're putting a story there, there's there's got to be a conflict. You know. Yeah. Y- you can obviously head candidate and say they just they revealed everything and everything was great and they went back to Earth and reestablished, which the is good. Conflict too. would be: Are there enough people that can fit in the rocket right. to go back? And how was the space station suspended in those clouds, or space shuttle suspended in those clouds? Um, and with Padma, I want a prequel. Hmm. I want the accident and the aftermath, and how both societies got established. I don't know. I think they summed that up well enough here, though. I mean, they really do go over the backstory a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to. I, I want to see it played out. See how it all went. Um, because there had to be a lot of working that out, a lot of conflict, and a lot of drama associated with it. Would either of these work as live action, though? I think Pal Cocoon needs to be anime. Needs to be animated. I don't think it works live action. I mean, it's uh, you know what they're doing live. When I say live action these days, of course, F a lot animation. of it's. A- animated anyway yeah, yeah. yeah kind of have cg i just like, think... i never understood that the lion king live action it's right. like but it's just all cgi right. dude but <laughs> i think palcacoon works better in animation you can set the mood better yeah than you can in, in live action i would love to see a live action padova but the effects budget would be insane the effects budget would be insane, and it, uh, I'd be terrifying, actually. Yeah, that's true. Some of those shots in an in animation messed with my fear of heights. I don't want to see that in live action. You're right. You imagine seeing that in a fucking IMAX? Yeah, no, Holy no. shit. No. On the brains? On the brains. I loved it. I went five. I'm going five as well. I'm a little, I mean, Ishimura was a bit cartoony, mm-hmm. Um uh, but the rest of it really does hold up, and uh, the some of the best chase scenes I've seen in a long time. Just maybe if you've got any equilibrium issues or a real bad fear of heights, pass on it. <laughs> <laughs> so what have we learned? According to Pal Cocoon, the future will have just as shitty Wi-Fi as we do in the present. <laughs> and I learned to never trust the government. <laughs> All right, that's it for Pal Cocoon and Padma Inverted. Until next time, when we'll be reviewing Life Force... Our Mandela Effect movie. <laughs> we both remember reviewing this one years ago, but it's not on the list. I could have sworn we did this. Yeah. But, I mean, maybe we've just seen it enough times to feel like we've reviewed it, and we've probably talked about it plenty of times. We've never reviewed it. Yeah. We're finally going to review it. Of course, until then, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. There you are.